Next question is from S Powers 28. What are your thoughts on full body workouts on consecutive days? You can do this so long, typically, as you modify the intensity appropriately. So, in fact, you can work out your whole body every single day. Mm -hmm. I mean, seven days a week if you wanted to. But it's not hard seven days a week. Usually what that would look like is two or three hard workouts with, you know, four or, you know, or, or, or five uh, easier uh, full body workouts. So the intensity has to be modified, but you can definitely train things back to back on consecutive days and get great results. If you don't modify the intensity, you're in for some trouble. Typically you train hard everything all the time without allowing some kind of recovery you're probably going to run into some problems. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me a lot of like some jobs that are really rigorous and, and physical. Uh, I mean, you have to get up and you do that job every single day, and your body starts to get adapted and really good at it. Um, but you know, there's a way to do this. It's all like intensity based in terms of how beneficial it is for you and like how you can kind of scale that. But to, to be able to keep reinforcing and teaching these movements to your body is going to do you actually some good and actually get stronger in a lot of these movements as a result, as so, long as that's taken into account. So if I know that I'm going to be training two days in a row, I would actually split my routine up. So I do this a lot with MAPS Anabolic. So I'm following like a MAPS Anabolic-esque routine right now, right? And I, I know that this week I'm going to be able to get, you know, five days or six days in the gym. And so what I might do is I might take the full body routine and, and cut it in half. And on Monday, do the first half of it. On Tuesday, do the upper second lower, half of it. Upper, lower, Yeah, and, and go upper, lower, upper, lower. That's so what just, I'm doing right now. Yeah, so, uh, and then on day, weeks where I only have three days I can make it to the gym, then I follow the more traditional way that it was written. So that's one of the ways that you can modify the program. So if I know that, right? So if I know ahead of time, I'm going to be going back-to-back -back days of training, I'll normally split the body up on that. Otherwise, you would have to modify, like you're saying, of like really scale back on the intensity. Or the other option I do is like, let's say I trained a full body. I didn't know that I'd have availability to work out again on Tuesday, so I'm getting this extra day in. But then I'm like, oh man, I kind of hit most of everything on this. That's where I might focus on a lagging body part or maybe do core or turn it into a mobility day. So that might be how I call an audible when I know I just did a full body uh, workout the day before or what I might do the next day. Yeah, I'm a huge uh, proponent of frequency. I think frequency, for a long time at least, uh, training your body parts frequently was something uh, that was talked down upon. Mm -hmm. It was all about intensity and about having lots of days of rest. I think frequency is phenomenal. I think practicing things often is excellent for building muscle, improving strength, improving performance. You just got to modify the intensity. If the intensity is appropriate, meaning some days are hard, some days are moderately hard, other days are very easy, this frequency can be an extremely powerful tool. It really trains the central nervous system in effective ways. It gets you to learn movement very well. Yeah. And it sends a constant muscle building signal. Of course, the loud ones with the hard workouts and low ones with the light workouts. Nonetheless, you're still getting this signal sent to the body to build on a pretty regular basis. So when it comes to frequency, like this, by the way, is something I changed my mind on about halfway through my career. I was the intensity and lots of rest person before. When I started experimenting with frequency with my clients first and then myself, it was like game changer. Well, it's really the secret sauce of most of our programs is the addition of the frequency builders. And we find that in different forms based off the different goals that we sort of engineer in there. But I mean, this is something that, you know, world-class strength coaches know about. Oh, and yeah. so they, they call it different things. Like, and I've heard like even Corey Schlesinger calls it like a microdosing, you know, intensity versus, you know, like the macro dose and like what that you know scale looks like and but it's always related to you know total body movement and you know practicing a lot of these types of strength moves